acid base reactions is today's topic. So we're going to just kind of look back at uh, a type of double displacement reaction. We looked at neutralization way back when. Right? We know that when the neutralization reaction, we're combining pretty much a reaction between an acid base. Key components that we're forming is a salt, okay, some kind of any type of an ionic compound, and water. So we've got the acid plus base forms salt, as a salt, and water. This the order between doesn't really matter. So you choose what order you want to write it. And I always usually uh, wrap it up with water. Now, so a salt is an ionic compound that is composed of the anion from the acid and the cation from a base. Okay. So usually the H from the, uh, the acid combines with the uh, hydroxide to form the water, right? But it's these, uh, and the anion from the acid, right? So if you have the H and some kind of anion for the acid, combines with the uh, metal with the hydroxide of the, um, the base, that's what forms the, um, the salt. Right, so here we have right, the uh, hydrogen, okay, so the cation and the anion. Right? So cation, anion. Right? Here, cation, anion. Right? So cation, anion. So the cation, as we said, from um, the base, okay, the cation from the base with the anion of the acid form our ionic compound, right? Form our salt. So here we have the following, same equation. So the balanced chemical equation for this reaction shows that one mole of nitric acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide. So if equal molar quantities of nitric acid and sodium hydroxide are used, the result is a neutral aqueous solution of sodium nitrate. Now, uh, concentration plays a very big role, right? Just because we're putting together an acid and a base does not mean we get a true neutralization reaction that will occur, right? Because in this reaction, we actually have one mole of each combined, right? So we've got equal uh, molar quantities of the acid and a base, right? And that will give us a neutral pH of 7. Now, when a strong acid reacts with any strong base in a mole ratio, from the balanced chemical equation, a neutral aqueous solution of a salt is formed. Now, reactions between acids and bases of different strengths usually do not result in a neutral solution. So we could still write it down and, and still identify it as a um, neutralization reaction. Right? But when we're trying to actually find the concentrations of our uh, ionic salt, right, our ionic compound, we may not get the pH of seven because the concentrations actually vary between the acids and the bases. So, how can you determine that a neutralization reaction is taking place? For most neutralization reactions, there are no visible signs that a reaction is occurring. Okay, we, um, we looked at uh, an acid-base reaction in the lab way back uh, at the year, you know, early parts of the term where we combined two things, but we really couldn't tell you know, whether or not there was a neutralization reaction that actually occurred, right? We needed to do something to it, right? We added an indicator. The indicator that we used was phenolphthalein. So we used something called an acid-base indicator to identify whether or not the, a neutralization reaction actually occurred, whether or not we have an acid, whether or not we have a base in the end. So this substance that changes color in acidic and basic solutions and that most acid-base indicators are considered weak monoprotic acids, right? Monoprotic meaning that we can give off one proton, okay? That one proton of the hydrogen proton will actually dissociate in solution, okay? And most indicators are considered um, weak acids or even sometimes some of them are actually weak bases. So uh, the undissociated weak acid is one color, its conjugate base is a different color. So in one, right, in, in when we're using the indicator, the indicator will show a specific color. Right? But the minute we add it 
to um, to maybe you know to the actual solution, we may see a color change. Right. So if we don't, it'll tell us one thing. If it does, it'll tell us another thing. So in an acidic solution, the indicator does not dissociate very much. It appears as one color. So if you were to, we, when we were adding the, um, the phenolphthalein to the acid, right, we noticed that there was no change in color, right? Because the phenolphthalein uh, combined in uh, the acid gives us one type of a color change, which was really no color change, right? So there was no dissociation. But when we put it in the base, we saw a change in color, right? So we would get one color, right? Uh, if we have, let's say, an acid, we'd have to get a different color if we had a base and vice versa, right? So in a basic solution, the indicator dissociates much more. It appears as a different color. So what happened was the, um, uh, the phenolphthalein, right, or any type of indicator, when combined in solution, will probably dissociate. If it dissociates, as we have in this example right here, if it dissociates, it'll give off that different color. So when we put the phenolphthalein into the sodium hydroxide and we got that pink color, right, that fuchsia color, right, there was a dissociation that actually occurred within the solution and that's what gave it that different color, right? We put that same indicator in the acid and it didn't change color. We put it in the base and it changed color. 